Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna do a vlog cooking style video, which I haven't done in a really long time, um, other than my what I ate in a days. And I know that a lot of other YouTubers and creators are doing these kind of quarantine edition what I ate in a day videos, but I just felt like that was gonna be a little disruptive to my whole family because nobody can really leave the house right now. And we also have some extra guests staying with us. So instead, I wanted to share with you four easy recipes using um, your, your pantry staples and your freezer staples, things that you've probably kind of accumulated after one of your big grocery hauls um, and you're not sure what to do with them. So all of four of these recipes, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert are completely plant-based. So hopefully I'll be able to share a little bit of inspiration, give you some ideas of what to do because for a lot of you, you know, you might be cooking every single meal for yourself. You, you're not going out, you're not ordering in, and that can be really stressful. I know for me, I'm doing all the cooking in the house and even just the meal planning is so overwhelming to be thinking so far in advance about every single ingredient and every single snack or every single drink that we may want in that week. So hopefully this gives you some ideas. And of course, I'm gonna leave all of these recipes in the description below so you can definitely check that out. All right, now without further ado, let's get to this. Okay, so first we're gonna do my protein packed stuffed sweet potato. And I know a lot of you loved the idea that I had in one of my other videos about adding in some white beans to avocado to boost up the protein in avocado toast. So I'm always trying to think about ways to add protein to the breakfast meal that does not necessarily need or require eggs or Greek yogurt or protein powder. So this might be a really fun hack that you'll be doing a lot while in isolation. Let's get to it. Okay, so first thing I did was I literally just stuck my sweet potato in the microwave until it was like really, really soft. You can also bake them at like 350 degrees and it'll probably take about an hour or so. And I'm gonna carefully try to scoop out the cooked flesh. Okay, next I've just got some um, very soft tofu. This is going to be the protein, of course. And if I was making this like in a big batch, I would use an entire brick of tofu for about four sweet potatoes. But you'll, I'll leave the recipe, of course, in the description below. Then I've got some natural peanut butter or almond butter, any kind of nut butter. Just gonna add a little bit of flavor. We've got some cinnamon here. Any kind of baking spice would be lovely here. And a pinch of salt. And then I'm just going to puree that until really smooth. Okay, so that is what you're looking for. Now we basically restuff the sweet potato. Okay, so honestly, that sweet potato is delicious all on its own. And in fact, if you don't even wanna stuff the sweet potato again, you can just like eat that almost like an alternative to yogurt or oatmeal. It is truly, truly delicious. But I like to top mine off with a little bit of chia jam, which again, this is something that I make pretty much every single week. And now that you have probably a lot of frozen fruit in the freezer, this is a really great way to use it up. So I'm gonna show you how I make it with cherries, but really any kind of fruit would work. Okay, so I've got some frozen uh, sour cherries here. You can use, like I said, any kind of frozen fruit or sweet cherries. Those are going in. And I'm just gonna give that a minute to heat up until they start to basically melt down. You can also give them a little bit of a mash to kind of break them up a little bit. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of lime juice, but you could use lemon juice. I usually use lemon juice, but I don't have any lemons. So lime it is. Lime and cherries are delicious. Now, if you're using regular cherries, this probably isn't an issue, but if your cherries are a little sour like mine, you can add like a little bit of maple syrup to taste just to sweeten. 
Okay, so my cherries have cooked down nicely. I'm just going to put them into a little jar or container. And I'm gonna add in some white chia seeds. You can use black chia seeds, but I have white at the house, so. Definitely one of my major pantry staples is chia. So basically you just let this sit overnight and I have a batch ready to go, so I will assemble this breakfast. All right, so we've got our finished set chia jam here. And like I said, I always have this in the fridge for toast or oatmeal or yogurt or things like this. So let's give a good dollop on top. I've also got a few extra sour cherries that I just thawed out. Have a little peanut butter drizzle. And because I put hemp hearts on basically everything, a little bit of that. Voila, that is your easy pantry freezer staple breakfast. All right, folks, we have accomplished breakfast. Let's move on to lunch. Now we're gonna make this like so super simple 10 minute uh, tortilla soup. And I'm making this completely vegan and plant-based, but um, on my blog, I actually have it so that you would add in like a pulled rotisserie chicken to, again, make it like a crazy easy weeknight meal. So if you eat chicken, then feel free to throw some chicken in. Actually, if you're picking up a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store, this reheating method as making it into a soup would be a great way to ensure that it is like fully safe to eat. So, but like I said, this version is going to be completely plant-based, but of course, adjust based on what you have in the pantry, fridge and freezer. Let's get to it. Okay, so to our soup pot, I've just got some jarred salsa. You can also use homemade if you have it already. But again, we're talking about pantry staples, making things super simple, super easy. This is a crazy easy hack. So we've got jarred salsa going in. And that already has like your onions and your garlic like sauteed, so you've skipped that step. So that's going in. We've got a can of black beans that I've just drained and rinsed really, 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 really well. That goes in. We've got some veggie stock. You can use chicken stock, especially if you're adding chicken to this, of course. We've got some tomato paste just to boost up the tomato flavor. Another pantry staple. I always have tomato paste. There's so many recipes that would call for it. We've got a little bit of cumin, and no, this is not sponsored. Cumin, and a little bit of chili. Um, if you wanna make this super, super mild, of course, you could omit the chili. Then a little bit of lime juice. And limes, if you don't have space for them in the fridge, that's okay, you can leave them in the pantry. All right, so we're just gonna give this a nice little stir. Let it heat up a bit. And once that comes to a simmer, then we're gonna add in our veg. Okay, so now that this has come together, um, I have a lot of frozen vegetables in my freezer right now, and I'm always trying to figure out what to do with them so that they don't taste like crap. Um, and I find that soups are actually one of the best ways to use frozen vegetables. So I've got some frozen bell peppers here. That can go in. And of course, lots of frozen corn. And this is a super versatile recipe, so of course use whatever frozen veggies you happen to have in abundance in your freezer. But literally, because they're basically already like flash frozen and, and pre-cooked, this is just going to take a second to warm through. Okay, so that was how easy that was. It literally took me 10 minutes to make a gorgeous veggie packed soup. Um, and if you want to, of course, make it more Instagrammable, I've got a little bit of vegan sour cream or vegan yogurt. Of course, we got some avo. I'm gonna eat this piece. And a little bit of cilantro on top.
All right, loves, we are back and it's time for dinner and we're gonna be making an unstuffed cabbage roll in a bowl. Um, and I love cabbage rolls, traditional cabbage rolls with the rice and, and the meat and the sauce all in the, the cabbage and it's kind of like a sweet and, and tangy sauce. It's delicious, but I do not have time to be stuffing cabbage rolls right now and you guys probably don't either. So this is a really quickie version and it's almost like a deconstructed cabbage roll. And of course we're making it completely plant-based. So let's get to it. Okay, so into our pot, I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil over like a medium high heat or so. And I'm gonna add in some onion and a little bit of garlic that I've just chopped up here. Let's give that a moment to become aromatic and break down a little bit. Okay, next I'm adding in some green cabbage that I've just chopped up nice and into small little chunks like that basically. Okay, so now we're gonna add in our tomatoes. So I've got some canned tomatoes. I've actually drained most of the liquid. Um, a little bit is gonna be still left behind, but I'm gonna mainly add in the tomato pieces, and then if we need more liquid, we can add that at the end. I've got some tomato sauce here. A little bit of maple syrup. You can also use brown sugar or any other kind of sweetener you like apple cider vinegar, and a little aged balsamic vinegar. Now I'm just gonna season with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, and we'll give it a good stir. I'm now gonna just pop the lid on and let that simmer for about 15 minutes until the cabbage softens up. Okay, so after about 15 minutes, the cabbage has softened nicely and has been coated in this beautiful sweet tomato sauce. And the sauce is almost like caramelized a little bit because of that aged balsamic and that little bit of maple syrup or sugar in there. Okay, so your last step is just to add some of this veggie ground round. Um, it's basically like already cooked. It's like a soy based um, meat. Um, but if you want to use regular ground beef or ground turkey or ground chicken, just make sure that you've cooked it before you add it in at this step because it's really just a quick, quick little stir around as we are gonna add it in here. So in we go. I'm just gonna break it up a little bit and then get it evenly distributed throughout. All right, friends, that is the final product. And it's so easy, so simple, made with a cabbage that will literally last weeks in the pantry. All right, so to serve, I've just added a base of some quinoa because that's the pantry staple that I have a lot of, but you could always use rice or any other grain. Um, and then we've topped it off with our deconstructed cabbage roll filling, a little bit of parsley, and voila. All right, friends, we are now going to make my favorite part of every day, dessert. We're going to do tahini stuffed chocolate dipped dates. Hello. So these are really, really delicious. And actually all the ingredients came out of my pantry. So you probably have a lot of the same kinds of ingredients in your pantry right now. Um, and if you don't, a lot of them are really easy to swap in with other nuts and nut butters and ingredients. So let's get to this. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is just pit these dates because yeah, we gotta make room for some yummy tahini and nobody wants to eat a date pit. Unless you're my dog Poppy, in which case, Hey, one time she got an entire box of dates, ate the entire thing, pit and all. Um, it was probably not a very pleasant day for her to go to the bathroom. But then like a week later, she did the same thing. So I guess glutton for punishment, right? Couldn't be that bad. So like you can see, I'm trying not to completely break them in half, just break into them gently and get the pit out. This one had no pit. Weird, very weird. All right, next step. Okay, so we've got some gorgeous, delicious, thick tahini right here. And I'm going to add in 
some crushed pistachios and give that a nice little stir carefully because of course I chose a vessel that is way too small to do this elegantly. Now, because I like a little sweet and kind of savory combination, I'm gonna add in a little bit of fleur de sel just to flavor up my tahini here. And now it's time to stuff. Okay, so get your date, get a little dollop of your tahini. Squish it in there. Gorgeous. This is a messy job, so if you have to lick your fingers, I'm not gonna judge you. Okay, so next up, we're just going to take our stuffed tahini dates, pop them on a baking sheet line with a little bit of parchment paper, and then I'm gonna put them in the freezer for about 10 minutes just to set up. Okay, so now is the fun step. We've got our dates, our stuffed dates. We've got some melted chocolate that I just put in the microwave. You could do it in a double boiler if you prefer. We're going to give it a good coat. Put it down on your tray. A little fleur de sel. A little crushed pistachios. And a little sesame seeds. So gorgeous. Let's make some more. All right, and they are all done. And since they were already pretty cold before we started to add the chocolate, they're basically just gonna set on their own. But if you're not gonna eat them immediately, definitely pop them into the fridge. All right, folks, that is it. We've got breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert, um, all using really simple ingredients that you probably have in your pantry, your freezer, and your fridge from your big COVID-19 grocery hauls. I hope that these recipes give you a little bit of inspiration and help take some of the stress away from meal planning during these already crazy, chaotic times. Also, a big heads up, we've got lots of other recipes on my blog, Abby's Kitchen, so definitely check out the link below. And if you're not already, follow me on my Instagram, at Abby's Kitchen. I am sharing my personal weekly menu, just based on what I've got in my freezer and what I plan to pick up each week when I do my grocery delivery haul. Um, on that note, if you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below about any other kind of content that you want to see more of. If you have any pantry staples or freezer staples that you want to see me turn into a meal, leave me a comment below and I will try to do that either on my blog or over here at Abby's Kitchen on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye!